give it up for the praise and worship in Jesus mighty name amen we may take our seats in the presence of the Lord thank you very much uh, for coming and I believe this has too much base eh? I, um, I believe that you are going to work on it to be at, at least uh, better um, I already appreciated, appreciated you for coming tonight and I want to like uh, complete on something that I had started uh, last week but one there's something that I was uh, talking about uh, in this service and uh, that's what I want to complete and um, we were talking about facing or dealing with uh, impossible situations and um, I, we read um, in the book of uh, um, Exodus chapter number 14, uh, beginning from verse 9 thereabout. And uh, I just want to read uh, some few verses there. And uh, verse 10, let me read verse 10 and uh, verse... Uh, verse 10 through to verse 12 of the book of Exodus chapter number 14 and the Bible says and when Pharaoh drew near the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold the Egyptians marched after them and uh, they were so afraid and the children of Israel so or cried unto the Lord and they said unto Moses because there were no graves in Egypt uh, that thou hast taken away us uh, away to die in the wilderness wherefore hast thou dealt uh, thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt uh, is it not this uh, the word that we did tell thee in Egypt saying let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians uh, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians uh, than uh, that we should die in the wilderness now uh, we read this uh, uh, words together with uh, there is verse uh, 9 that I skipped and there is uh, the verse 13 and 14 uh, there which uh, Moses now is speaking to the people as the mouthpiece of God and I told you oftenly we are faced with impossible situations situations whereby we feel helpless we feel like there is no way out and actually we don't know who to blame or even where to run and uh, all of us and I say I'm no exception in this we have found ourselves in this kind of situations and I told you as human beings there is a way sometimes we feel like we should deal with it because the children of Israel here are seeing a situation whereby Pharaoh is coming and uh, the Red Sea is for them and they have nowhere to go and even to make it more worse they were with their children and everything they had remember as they left Egypt they had been given so much silver and gold actually uh, because the promise was that when God was speaking about them uh, many years to come uh, through Abraham he told them or he told him that your seed is going to be in a foreign land for 400 years and after that I am going to uh, uh, deliver them and bring them to this land and I'm going to punish their oppressors but they shall not live empty-handed and therefore when they are leaving this land there are a people that are not empty-handed they are with silver they are with gold they are with raiment in fact God gave them favor so much that they went and borrowed from their oppressors in this context you realize it's very difficult for you to borrow your enemy something or someone who is not your friend who is not your family who is not related to you in any way who in fact wishes your death who does not have any good intentions towards you and you go asking for them for something that is so precious and you expect them to give you 
actually it's too much to expect in fact there are some people that you would go asking for something from and you be telling yourself and even people that you meet along the way that I, I, i'm going anyway just to try but i know it's so difficult it may not happen they may never give me anything because in any case we are enemies but god gives his people such favor that they ask for precious things from their enemies and their enemies give them and you can see how god can operate and and this is the same enemy that is not willing to let them go this is the same enemy who has been punished by God so much through many miracles including the last one of taking away the firstborn of all the male children of the Egyptians so that they can be forced to release them to let them go they have given them gold they have given them silver they have given them everything now let me tell you some of those situations that make us scared now you will ask any family person here and they will tell you that a situation is good enough when they are facing it alone if it's a difficult or kind of risky situation when they are facing it alone it's good enough but when they are facing such a situation with their wealth you have everything that you own for example you are carrying money you are carrying money and you are surrounded by people whom you do not know their intentions or you know their intentions you be so scared and especially if you are carrying everything that you have they were carrying money they were having their children if you are facing a dangerous or kind of risky situation when you are having your family there your children are there your spouse is there then it can't get any worse it's already worse enough because that is a situation where by the israelites particularly here are the men addressing uh, moses and telling him didn't we warn you didn't we tell you to let us live in egypt and serve the egyptians rather you brought us here so that we may die in the wilderness these are people who are seeing that we cannot run because we have our children here we have our spouses here we have our precious things here we have our livestock we have our everything here we we again we can't fight because fighting with our children is risky it's risky in fact even those people uh, on monday we are experiencing our uh, demonstrations and uh, even those people that came out they did not come out with their children holding their children even including the small ones and taking them through those you can't take your family there they didn't because anyone with a sober mind will tell you that the battle is not for such you cannot risk did you see any one child being carried there you can't you can't people can't don't do that they don't risk their families and therefore this is a situation whereby they are seeing moses you would rather have maybe sampled this whatever experience if you wanted to try something with us the men rather than advising us to bring all our families here so that we are facing this risk together this danger together it's better would have left them and think about them later how to come back for them but now when they are faced with that they are asking moses whether there was no way he could have allowed them to remain in egypt and serve the egyptians but they came up and they would they were thinking of what to come up with and face the egyptians because they are the impossible kind of a situation these are people that already consider themselves dead they have already given up on life because they are saying were well, there are no graves were well, there are no graves in egypt someone that is talking about a grave is someone that considers themselves already dead they are already dead and i know even as we sit here and listen there are some situations that you consider already dead in your life they have no chance of survival 
because of the risk. By the way, it's not that they were dead, but they were as good as dead. There is a difference. But I would take my chances when I have God. I would take my chances. I would say that as long as I'm not dead, because Ecclesiastes, the, the writer of Ecclesiastes says that uh, it's better or a living dog is better than a dead lion. Because he realizes a lion, bold as it is, wild as it is, powerful as it is, dominating as it is, cannot be any better when it's dead already than a living dog. Dog, weak as it is, you know, despised as it is, small as it is compared to the lion, you know, weak and all those things that you can say and ascribe to a dog, it is better when it's alive. So, and I want to encourage you tonight that as long as you are alive, and you remember I preached such a sermon once, you still have a chance. As long as you are alive, you can take the risks. As long as you are alive, it doesn't matter what is surrounding you, you still have an opportunity to come out of that situation alive. You still have an opportunity to conquer, even if you are down. Because sometimes we consider, because we are down there, and uh, already our enemy is claiming victory. Claiming victory that we have already won. I know you have seen these, uh, uh, that we say don't celebrate early, because the devil is one such kind of an enemy, he celebrates so early. Because we are told uh, that your enemy, the devil, is like a low, ro roaring lion. You know, he, he, he roams around like a roaring lion. He is not a lion, but he purports to be a lion. So powerful, so that when he roars, you are already scared and you declare yourself dead. And as soon as you declare yourself dead, but you are still alive, the devil begins to celebrate. I know you have seen this thing. I love football. Football is my thing. And um, you've seen this thing. There is a player that uh, I don't know whether it's from Leicester or whatever, but they are blues, eh? but not Chelsea. Um, and uh, he has like dribbled the ball and went over everybody, including the goalkeeper who had come out of his 18, so that he is thinking that I already have a goal. And you have seen it uh, being circulated around from um, quite some time ago. And this player starts to celebrate the goal before he scores. And when he finally hits the ball, it hits the crossbar. <laughs> he is all alone. He has already gone over all the defenders and even the goalkeeper. He is all alone. The goal is open for him to score. He starts celebrating. He starts celebrating. But as soon as he kicks the ball, <laughs> it hits the crossbar and goes out. <laughs> And he realizes that his celebration is cut short. And may I tell you something? The devil may be celebrating over your situation, but you are not done yet. He has not conquered you yet. He has not finished you yet until you are completely finished. So that's why we say, never say never, and never say die, or never say it's over until it's over until it's completely over. I don't want to believe it's over. Whether the devil is celebrating or not, whether the devil is already declaring victory or not, whether the devil is already doing more than he ought to do over my life or not, whether I am surrounded by how many enemies I will not give up because these people had given up and they had surrendered and they didn't know what to do. But Moses encouraged them because as human beings, we have options. I told you, option of surrender, option of uh, uh, fighting back, option of hiding. And I told you that most of us take the latter. Uh, we, those that have not surrendered and are not fighting back, they take the latter option of hiding. 
trying to postpone the, 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 the problem. I told you, if you are hiding, for example, from all your troubles, from the creditors, eh? people that you owe money, and you are hiding from them, they will still catch up with you. <laughs> It's only a matter of time. If you're hiding from your landlord, eh, he, 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 mostly they are his. Eh? Uh, sorry for discrimination, but mostly landlords and caretakers are his. Now, he will soon catch up with you. It doesn't matter how long. Eh? And sometimes uh, we have closed our eyes and we have imagined that as soon as we open our eyes, that situation is going to be gone. And we open them only to find that the situation has grown bigger. Yeah? If these people close their eyes and imagine that Pharaoh is gone, he is nowhere, there is no Red Sea, there is no danger surrounding us, they would have opened their eyes and realized Pharaoh is closer than he was earlier. And that's what we do many times. But God has given us a lifeline because he told them, do not be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And I gave a breakdown of that, is that uh, no need of surrender, there is no need of fighting back, and there is no need of hiding. But I told you that it's very difficult to tell someone who is surrounded by this mess and all these dangers that relax. Don't fight back, don't surrender, and yet don't do nothing. Just relax and see the salvation of the Lord. It's very difficult. It's very difficult because it is when people are anxious and afraid. It is when the enemy has scared them enough. They, they know that I have to do something. I have to do something. But seeing the salvation of the Lord requires that you do nothing according to the standards of men, but something or everything in the spiritual realm. And that's a point right there. Because this, the nothing here that I'm talking about, it's the nothing as far as the world is concerned. Because the world will advise you, either run, hide, or fight back. What if you cannot fight back? What if you cannot fight back? I remember I, I, I gave you a story of a woman that I was uh, her pastor. Uh, it's quite a while ago. And, and, and this lady, the husband uh, was in the process of selling a portion of their land, which was already small. And uh, he died before he completed the transaction, the husband. Now, the, the buyer comes. The buyer comes. Because it was a secret kind of a thing that the, the lady didn't know. The sons didn't know. Nobody knew. So that uh, it was a written kind of an agreement on a piece of paper and uh, they said, uh, I only need to pay the balance. In fact, the man was honest enough and said that I need only to pay a balance and get an acre from this portion of land. Now, there were only two acres of land. And uh, th this lady was saying, no, 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 we, 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 we are no longer selling the land. In fact, now they were returning the deposit that the husband had already collected and eaten. Eh? And they didn't know, by the way, because he never disclosed to them. And they didn't find any money in the, all his accounts eh? unless he had a, a, a home account. You know those home accounts? Eh? And uh, maybe he would have dug for the money somewhere and uh, buried the money. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, there are people, by the way, who still do so. They, they have a land somewhere, they come, they dig a hole, they secure whatever they are securing to make sure that the termites do not interfere, then they bury <laughs> to ensure nobody will steal it even if they break the house. So that they didn't find any money in all his accounts and they were willing to pay. But now this buyer, this buyer was quite powerful and connected. And uh, she came to me when the situation had escalated because they had gone to the local authorities, to the chief. The chief uh, was compromised uh, by this powerful fella. They went to the DO, they went to the DC. You know those times, uh, uh, it was during the Kibaki government and uh, there was that provision administration hierarchy, you know, where, how it was going. Now, this lady, when they went to the DO, and uh, 
she realized that this man is the one that is making things complicated. Because they were saying, and uh, she had been advised by someone to say that this, because it was an agreement that uh, they wrote outside there, and there was no consent, eh? spouse or consent or whatever, she does not acknowledge it. However, they are going to pay the deposit. And uh, the deal declined and they went further. Now, what happened when they, uh, there was a suit that was filed? Um, um, it was filed, you remember the former uh, provincial administration, uh, because it was around Central, the headquarters used to be in Nyeri. Njogu would know this eh, because he's born there. The headquarters of the provincial administration, the PCs, used to be in Nyeri. That's where it was filed. And this woman is coming from here, Kiambu. And uh, she, she doesn't have money. She's already a widow. She's having uh, three teenagers. There were teenagers. At least one was the only one that was remaining to, to complete from four. But the, the others had just completed. But uh, she doesn't have a, a, a job. She doesn't have anything. She doesn't have an income. And now she'll be going for a hearing in Nyeri. And she came to me. And when I listened, I listened, I realized that what is happening, this man is so well connected and he's so much powerful that we can do nothing. In fact, she was advised, by the time she came to me, she had been advised because she's a lady to go to the FIDA, those who know FIDA, eh? FIDA is something, something, something for women. Eh? I don't know what it stands for, but uh, it's something for women. But there are lawyers eh? that are, you know, have an association to defend women. Uh, and when she went, she was given a lawyer. But this lawyer is a thug, eh? <laughs> in quotes. <laughs> she is given a lawyer purportedly for free because that's what FIDA does. But the lawyer outside of the system is, you know, draining her every penny that she has. She says, uh, he's going to file this, he's going to file this, he's going to discover this, he's going to this and this office and ask for money. But that's not what she had been told in the offices. So when she came to me, she told me, the lawyer is not helping. He is demanding too much, which I don't have. And when I say I don't have, she, he says, it's your case anyway. I'm going to seek for an adjournment and it's going to be delayed further. And, and, and she was helpless. And when I realized I told her, you just do nothing. Do nothing. What if he, he calls? Say, tell him the truth. You don't have money. Just do what you've been doing. You don't have money. He said, no, no, no. How about if they take my land by force? I don't know. Now, the situation as it is, this man seems to be so well connected and so much powerful. He needs a higher power. And she asked me, which, which, which one is that higher power? Do you know somebody who knows somebody? I said, no, no, no. I don't know somebody who knows somebody. But I know someone who is over every other power and over every other authority. And that's the one that I represent because I'm a man of God. We are going to pray to that one. And that one, he is able to change this situation. It looks messy. You are about to lose this parcel of land. But that one can deal with it if no one else can deal with it. But it was very difficult for me to convince her. She kept coming and coming and told Pastor, are you sure we should do nothing? I was told by someone that if we look for 30,000, we go and bribe so and so and go and... I told her, no, no, no. That man is already powerful. If you go that route, he is already more powerful. He has been bribing his way up there. So do you think you are going to overbribe him? Because if it's about bribery, you know our system. It's about the highest leader. If you cannot, you know, pay more than she, he is paying, then don't bother. Don't bother paying because he's going to overpay you. But she, she relaxed finally when she had no options. And we prayed and we prayed, <laughs> waiting. The case delayed one year. The second year, towards the m middle of the, that second year, she came and told me, do you know what? From nowhere, the judges and those panel or whoever that were supposed to rule my case, they were changed all of a sudden. Those that were there were removed. And I don't know the whether they were transferred or whatever. And others were brought. And they expedited my case. And I won the case. I only have to pay back his deposit. The land is back to me. And she was telling me, when you are telling me to relax, 
and do nothing. I was afraid that I, you are telling me to give up, to give up my land, to wait and lose, or to allow my enemy to crush me further. But I told her something. There is something that you can do when no option is working because she had no option remaining which was possible on this earth. That's what I realized. There is no door that she could not knock or she could have knocked that this man could not have knocked. There is nowhere she could have gone that this man could not have gone. And let me tell you, when you are faced by such situations, sir, there is a God that deals with the impossible. There is a God that rescues us sir, from the hands of the enemy. Even when we are at the verge or, you know, to be devoured by the enemy, as the Bible says, sir, in the book of Psalms uh, that uh, uh, if the Lord had not been on our side our enemies would have swallowed us alive because the enemy has the ability to swallow you alive and even now as I'm speaking some of us are stuck we don't know what to do some of us are about to lose things to lose properties, to lose business, to lose something that you treasure so much. Some of us are going to be denied an opportunity and you're wondering, everybody else is bribing, everybody else is looking for money to pay, everybody is looking so for so and so, who knows so and so, who can connect you to this and that, so that your situation will be sorted. Can I tell you something? When you feel helpless, there is only one God that can be able to rescue you. And that's not the God of money. That's not the God of power. That's not the God of connections. That's not the God of this earth. He is our heavenly father. And that's why Daniel told uh, this king called Nebuchadnezzar, he had dreamt a dream and he presented it to his wise people, the sorcerers, the, who, the witches and all those people that used to interpret his dreams. Uh, but he said, uh, I'm not going to tell you the dream. Do you tell me what I dreamt and the interpretation thereof? And they told him, no, no, it has never happened. It has never happened. He said that I'm going to execute all of you. I'm going to kill all of you if you do not give me that dream and the interpretation. And uh, when that order had been given, the Bible says uh, that there is a man called Ariok. Ariok was the chief executioner. He was in charge of the execution of all the wise men. And the Bible says uh, Daniel was considered as one of the wise men. However, he had not been invited in that council to interpret the dream of the king. But when now Daniel is given an opportunity by this Ariok, the executioner, he goes to the king because he told the, this man called Ariok, take me to the king. He told the king one thing, that what you are seeking cannot be sought from men. That thing is so difficult and so impossible in the hands of men. But he said, but there is a God in heaven and that God is able even to enter the minds of people. He is able to see the dreams that you dream in the darkest hour of the night. He is able to see what you are imagining, what things that are coming into your mind, whether in forms of dreams, visions, and all those manner of things, because he lives in heaven. And some people from some French, they say, Dariaga Gima. Have you ever heard people saying that? Yeah, French, eh? Those that are not French. They say that he doesn't eat uga. Yes, he doesn't eat ugari. But unfortunately, all where we have been seeking this solution, we have been seeking from people who eat ugari. <laughs> so that they are like human as us. They are as human as we are. But they, 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 they experience the same things we experience. They go through the same things that we go through, only that they have been given positions of privilege, positions of power. They have been designated somewhere where you think they have a solution. Let me tell you, even these wise men, they were surrounding the king. They were positioned in positions of power and privilege, but they could not do what our God could do. Because when Daniel was given an opportunity, he gathered his friends 
And I can tell you, this is a secret that you can do. Because the Bible says in Philippians, huh? is it Philippians chapter number 4? The ones that say, uh, that are, uh, I believe verse 6 there, that do not be anxious about anything. Can you put it up? Do not be anxious about anything. But, aha, uh -huh. this is which version? I don't know. Be careful for nothing. But, in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Give me that version that says do not be anxious. Eh? Is it the NIV? I believe. Um, do not be anxious about anything. Is it the NIV? This is what? This is the King James. Eh? Uh -huh. This one. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now, anxiety, let me tell you, will persist as long as you are doing nothing in the spiritual realm. Let me tell you, the only thing that can sustain prayer, the only thing that can sustain prayer because when Moses is telling them stand still do not be afraid stand still and see the salvation of the Lord in other words what is he's telling them that you need to transfer your trust from yourself and the situation that you can see and all the options that you have in your mind to another source a higher source that's the only way you can sustain prayer. I can tell you for free, the reason as to why we do not continuously pray for certain situations is because we have not transferred our trust to that higher power. Our trust is still with us. Our trust is still with our families, with our connections, with our people that we know that are in positions and in places. And I, I, I'll tell you about the first job that I got. When I got the first job um, that I got, I was hired through somebody. And um, this person was very well connected. And um, soon after, I didn't know, he didn't tell me that he was resigning, by the way. He didn't tell me that he was resigning. <laughs> he was a church elder. <laughs> he didn't tell me, he was, soon after I started, he resigned and I didn't know because he was working in higher offices we were not meeting on a daily basis so the day I did my first mess the day I did my first mess so when you appear before you know when you are going through the systems uh, you you are taken to the personnel manage, ma manager and uh, your file is pulled out eh? as they listen to your case. So when they pull out your file, one of the first things that they were checking is who brought you. Because whoever brought you covers for you. So if whoever brought you is a powerful person, eh, in quotes, they are known to be very powerful and very well connected within the ranks and files, that, you know, the, the personnel management was somewhere in the middle of the hierarchy of the powers that be, eh? because before you reach the, the general managers and those that are uh, the CEO and all that, he is somewhere in the middle. So when he realizes whoever brought you is more powerful, yeah? <laughs> than him, then you are good, you are safe. So he pulled my file and realized that this fella was powerful and was well connected. But now, the problem is he had not heard, <laughs> he had not heard that this guy left like yesterday. <laughs> he had, somehow he had not realized that this guy left so he was told <laughs> in the middle of it, I was safe then. Eh? But he told me, no, no, no. Oh, so you, you thought you are still covered. Your guy left. <laughs> 
And by the way, what he is telling me doesn't make sense to me because I didn't know how these things work. You are new in the company so that you don't know how these things work. Eh? Nobody had told me. So, but I told him, me, what are you talking about? I didn't know. By the way, because the guy that had brought me, actually, in the file, he is not the one that is appearing. No. He had connected to another higher guy. But now, this guy, the, 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 when he left, and he had not told me he is leaving, so the one that had, uh, was in my file as the one that recommended me had already told the others in the office that I, I am no longer covering for this guy because he had been brought on behalf or uh, through connections. So this man told me that, uh, so you are starting to misbehave this early because of whoever brought you. You didn't know he left. I said, why? And I argued with the personnel. We argued and we argued and I argued my case eh? and I was forgiven. So I went back to work and I asked my fellows who had stayed there for a while, what is this they were talking about? Who brought me? Who did what? So no, 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 no. Whoever brought you covers for you even when you do mistakes here. So if yours has gone you are on your own <laughs> right now you are exposed <laughs> you can be sacked anytime but do you know what do you know what to, to cut the long story short even when i wanted to leave the company even when i wanted to leave that company i wanted to leave and i knew this is my time i'm leaving I did the worst. I did the worst. Two mistakes. First of all, I left without any permission and went for three days. I came back. <laughs> you know what I was looking for? To be sacked so that I'm paid something. Eh? But uh, they didn't sack me. They forgave me. <laughs> I tell you, when you are connected high above, <laughs> there is a power high above the power of men. And people are wondering, how did you survive that? I thought of something else. I thought of something else. I went for one and a half weeks without permission or excuse. I came back. You know, and the way you are coming back, eh, you are coming back as a don't care. You don't even report. You just go to work. Eh? <laughs> And when uh, my boss, my immediate boss, so, show, uh, saw me and said, Hey, you are here. We thought that you left completely. You are still here. And you think this is your mother's place. That you go for one week and a half. And I, I can tell you for free, that company, Patrick knows it. There is no way you could miss three days and survive without permission. There is no way. Me, I missed one and a half weeks. I came back to work and I was expecting to be sacked. I was taken to the same personnel manager who I argued with. Yeah. And uh, everyone, including the union, we had a union, uh, including those that were in charge of the union, had told me, you are on your own. Yeah. Mr. Gaido, you are on your own. On this one, you can't survive. And by the way, I had no excuse. In fact, I wanted to be sacked. I was telling them I was just resting at home. <laughs> so that they, they, look, they see me as a foolish man and all that, they sack me. I wanted to be sacked. That was my target. But you know what? I was forgiven. <laughs> and when I was forgiven, that case went through the ranks and file until I was invited by one guy. And thank God, this guy knew God. He's, he invited me. Told me, there is one going through the company that there is a guy who has messed up big time here. The offenses that he has committed, nobody has ever committed such and survived. But yet he has been forgiven. <laughs> And I wanted to know, what is your problem? He told me, tell me the truth. I told him, I don't want to work. <laughs> At least I confessed. He told me, ah, only that. And I can guess that you want some benefits. Because I, by where I was in that employment, I had not reached that time of benefits. But if you live through, maybe you are sacked and all that, you are given some benefits. So if I resigned, eh, I would not, I would have lost my benefits. So I wanted something. Eh? <laughs> so 
so uh, he told me, ah, I can guess. You, you, you wanted them to suck you, <laughs> but they did not suck you. <laughs> and probably you were reaching for your benefits. I'll help you. I'll help you. Just come with me. He took me to some offices. We went, we went. He, he was the one talking. Talked, 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 talked. In fact, do you know I was given more than I was entitled? <laughs> <laughs> and I left the company bouncing. <laughs> and everybody was asking me, how did you manage to do that? It doesn't happen. But I tell you what, those people, I was telling them, even me, I don't know. But one guy told me, it is this your church thing, eh? because they knew me as a church guy. That's the only thing that I was known with, church guy. This guy, this church guy, they couldn't understand how I could maybe be going to work and refuse to go, maybe um, to, to work just for a church function, just for, especially Sunday was a no-go zone. We were paid so much on Sunday, like three times what we were earning to go on a uh, Sunday, even at night. And I was saying, mm, not my thing. I don't want, I'm not interested, I'm in church. And, and the one guy said, it is this his church thing that maybe was protecting him. And I realized, by the way, even me, I had no idea. I realized that I had a heavenly covering so that I was untouchable. Where others are touched, I could not be touched. Can I tell you something? For you to be sustained in prayer, you need to transfer your trust elsewhere so that even when you are not aware, God is still fixing something for you. God is still doing something on your behalf. God is still fighting battles for you. Sometimes you go through things that people go through and they die and they are completely finished and they are sacked and they lose money and they lose business. But can you imagine you going through the same things but by the power of God you survive and I pray that is your portion in the name of Jesus because you do not need a covering here on earth. You need a covering from above. And as long as the Israelites had this covering from above, they knew that our trust is in the name of of the Lord. When your trust is in the name of the Lord, there is no one situation that will overwhelm you, that will overcome you in the name of Jesus. No matter what the doctors say, you will survive that sickness in the name of Jesus. No matter what the experts are saying, that this business cannot work in the middle of the crisis, you know, an economic shutdown and all those things that are happening in our nation. But can I tell you, you as we work in the mighty name of Jesus because you have higher covering in the name of Jesus. The Israelites throughout their journey they went scaring everybody. In fact there was a community that came to make a truce or peace with Joshua. They told Joshua that we were hearing because they deceived him. They came with us some uh, funny story that we have come from so far. We, we, when we left our bread was fresh now it's uh, full of more than all that. When we left, our shoes were new and our clothing were new. Now they are finished. Now we are in rags because of the journey. The journey has been so long. Where we come from? Look, just look at us and you will know where you, we come from. So can we make peace between you and us so that we will serve you? We don't mind uh, so long as we are with you. It was because these people are scared. They deceived Joshua and they make that kind of a pack, eh? an agreement, and they were never touched when everybody was being crushed. When Joshua realized, because Joshua was later told, those people that were telling you they come from far, they come just from here, bypass, bypass. Imagine, people are coming from bypass to here to deceive you. They come all the way from Vihiga. Yeah? So far, later, we have come from Vihiga. We have walked all the way. We had fresh bread. We had new clothing and new shoes. Look at us now. Look at our bread now. Let me tell you, they deceived Joshua. Why? When they were asked, why did you deceive me? They said, ah, you do not know the fear and the havoc that the Israelites are causing to all the nations that are on their way. Every nation that was on their way. 
they were trembling and shaking. Not because of the ability of Israel to fight, but because of the ability of their covering. And may you receive that covering in the mighty name of Jesus. So that people will be afraid of you. Institutions will be afraid of you in the name of Jesus. Even the surrounding and the enemies will be afraid of you because of your covering in the name of Jesus. May you continue to uh, trust in him in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I pray for all of us in the name of Jesus? If the Lord continues uh, to cover you in the mighty name of Jesus, as the Lord continue to be there for you, to fight your battles, uh, to bring solutions, uh, to be your covering in the mighty name of Jesus uh, in any and every situation when maybe you are surrounded by enemies uh, but in your working place, uh, in your business place, uh, in your kind of a career, wherever you are, you are surrounded by so many enemies and you seem to be in an impossible situation, but I may I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that right now God is becoming your covering that he, like he was uh, in the days of the Israelites, uh, he covered them uh, throughout, uh, it didn't matter the number of their enemies uh, it didn't matter the superiority of their enemies, uh, it didn't matter what their enemies had uh, and their experience, uh, it didn't matter the Lord covered for them uh, and he covered them throughout may the Lord cover you, cover your family, cover your business, cover your opportunities, you are not going to lose that business, you are not going to lose that opportunity, you are not going to lose that position you are not going to lose that whatever you are thinking that you are going to lose in the mighty name of Jesus you are not going to lose your children to diseases, to sicknesses you are not going to lose your family in the mighty name of Jesus no matter what the experts are saying may I declare in the name of Jesus uh, that the Lord is for you and he is fighting your battles in the mighty name of Jesus uh, because you have transferred uh, your trust uh, in him in the mighty name of Jesus uh, and right now as we pray I want to pray in the name of Jesus uh, may God uh, begin to rise uh, and his enemies be scattered uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, may God uh, show up uh, in your hour of need uh, may God uh, show up uh, when you are co co compassed uh, by so many enemies uh, in the name of Jesus uh, by so many messes uh, may God show up uh, may God rise up uh, and every enemy tremble and be scattered uh, in the name of Jesus uh, for he is an almighty God he is an all powerful God in the mighty name of Jesus uh, we thank you our father we praise you we honor you for we know that God there is no situation that is impossible before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Even with what the government of this nation cannot resolve, you can resolve our God. You can resolve our God in the mighty name of Jesus. Even what those in power cannot resolve, you will resolve it in the mighty name of Jesus. Jehovah God, my Father and my God, those that are confused in life, those that are in the midst of of their darkest hour. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, you are coming uh, to their rescue in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, and Heavenly Father, they are coming out victorious uh, with a song of victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, allow them to relax. Uh, allow them, oh dear Lord, uh, to fully submit unto your will uh, and give their trust unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. For that's the only way they will be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everybody say a better amen. Amen. Can we rise up even as we close in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Amen. I want to assure you that... Uh, the Lord is in charge of our situation in the name of Jesus. So, sometimes uh, as human beings thinking with human abilities, we are out of options completely. But uh, as, even as human beings, we find ourselves in such situations, we must know that there is one that never runs out of options. He is our God. He is the one that Daniel testified about and he said, there is a God in heaven. He is the one, he is the one that fought the battles of the Israelites. 
And right now I know sometimes we speak these things as though they are foreign and they come from utopia and from other places which we do not understand. But, but may I tell you something? Experiencing God is not something very difficult. It only takes you to trust in him. And when you trust in him, he works out something in the mighty name of Jesus. You remember in the days of Jehoshaphat, what he did, he put the singers and the musicians before the battle men and uh, those that were warriors and soldiers and they went praising the Lord and they didn't have to fight that battle. The Bible says uh, that the Lord caused confusion in the camp of the enemy so that they rose up one against the other so that when the Israelites appeared they realized uh, the enemy is down and it's completely finished. Uh, may I tell you, sometimes God is going to fight your battles in secret as you flee trust in him. Sometimes you can be singing a song of victory, a song of praising the Lord, how you have seen the Lord. And when people look at you, they see the opposite. You are, you are, you are in a mess. You are surrounded by all manner of situations and issues uh, that can define difficulty and mess and messed out life. Uh. But may I tell you something? There are whispers that are getting to God that you trust in him. That you, you, your trust is fully in him so that uh, he is in charge of that situation even when no one can do nothing about that situation not your parents not your friends not your connections not even your pastor not even your church not even the group of people that you pray together with may i tell you something god is doing something for that situation in the mighty name of jesus can i bless you for this week in the mighty name of jesus may you receive the covering of god this week in the name of jesus May the Lord fight all your battles in the mighty name of Jesus. May God appear on your behalf in your moment of distress in the name of Jesus. May he fight every battle that is surrounding you and hand you the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. This week I pray, may you have a song of victory and thanksgiving because of what the Lord has done for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that this week is a week of testimony in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Can you celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. Can you celebrate Jesus better if you are a believer in his miracle works? In Jesus mighty name. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a godly covered week in Jesus name. Amen.